Welcome to the OCI Grails QuickCast, bite-sized portions of Grails productivity tips to help maximize developer productivity with the framework. Grails QuickCasts are brought to you by OCI, the home of the core Grails development team and your source for professional support, project work, and training around the Grails framework. Grails QuickCasts are distributed in partnership with DZone, who help build knowledge and relationships to maximize your success. Hello and welcome to a new Grails QuickCast. My name is Sergio Delamo. I work in the Grails and uh, Micro team here at OCI. Um, today we are going to talk about uh, Gradle, which is the build system used by Grails 3 and Grails 4. Um, let me create a Grace application um, that will be the easiest way to um, to discuss uh, about Gradle. Um, I am here in the Grails uh, homepage. Um, the easiest way to create a new Grace application is either to use the Grace command line interface or to use the Grace application forge. Um, here I am going to use the Grace application forge. Uh, I went to the download tab and here there is a link to Grace application forge. Grace Application Forge is also available in a subdomain, start.grace.org. Mm, the Grace Application Forge um, allows you to uh, select the kind of the project type that you are um, that you want to create. In my case, I want to create an application, but if you wanted to create a plugin, there is an option also for there uh, for you there. Um, you can select the profile. Uh, in my case, I'm going to select the web profile, which is the default profile, but if you were um, building a, a application with a JavaScript um, front end such as Angular or React, um, you can select that here as well. Um, I'm going to select uh, the JEP2 option. Uh, JEP is compatible with uh, JDK 1.8, um, so that's the default uh, uh, minimum version that I want to support in this uh, sample application. And the last step for me is to click Generate. Uh, this will develop a zip file. Uh, with the Grace application configured, I'm gonna um, copy the zip file to the desktop uh, so that we are able to uh, see it better. Um, let me go to the desktop and, and zip the file. Um, let me, I have it here in my app. Uh, I can now import the project into IntelliJ. Um, so that will be uh, going to the desktop, uh, selecting my app. This will start automatically the um, import uh, a wizard from IntelliJ idea. Um, automatically, it suggests me to import from an external model and it suggests me to import from Gradle. Uh, that's correct. I'm going to click next. Now it tells me, uh, it recommends me to use the default Gradle wrapper and that's what we are going to do. Um, what's the Gradle wrapper? Um, the Gradle wrapper basically is a script um, that invokes a declared version of Gradle. Um, you will download it, it beforehand if necessary. Uh, and it's basically the recommended way to use Gradle um, because uh, it enables, for example, uh, developers to use um, a Grace application or, or any uh, application uh, built with Gradle um, without even having Gradle uh, installed in the computer of the developers. Uh, it also um, standardizes a Gradle version uh, for everyone working in this Gradle application. Um, I, not just for developers working in the application, but also for their continuous integration server. So we have um, our app uh, building in, in Jenkins or in Travis. Um, we, we, the, the Gradle wrapper ensures that the, the continuous integration server uses the same version that we are using in uh, my local machine. So that's always great to create a reproducible builds uh, where everyone is using the same Gradle version. Um, also, it enables for an easy upgrade of um, a Gradle version. Uh, by default, um, we recommend you to stick with the uh, Gradle version uh, shipped uh, with the particular uh, Grace version that you are currently using. Uh, for example, um, uh, I created an application using 339, uh, which is the default um, Applicates the default stable uh, Grace version uh, at, the, at the time of this recording. Uh, the recommended Grace, Gradle version to use is um, 335. Uh, you can find that in the under uh, the Gradle folder wrapper and then Gradle wrapper.properties. 
Um, if in case you are wondering, um, let's discuss uh, a couple of uh, Gradle related files uh, that were introduced by us uh, for us in the project. Um, the first one that we were just mentioning is the Gradle wrapper properties, uh, which is located under Gradle wrapper. Uh, and it's basically um, a properties file responsible for configuring the wrapper and random behavior. Um, so here we have uh, 3.5. Um, we could actually change the version here and that will uh, trigger the upgrade uh, of Gradle version, but the recommended way to do, to do a Gradle uh, version uh, upgrade will be to use instead uh, something like this, something like um, Gradle wrapper, invoke the Gradle wrapper command and supply a new uh, Gradle version. Um, as uh, I was saying before, um, we recommend you to um, stick with the Gradle version, stick with the, with the particular Grace version that you are using because uh, we are 100% sure that everything works in Grace as expected uh, with that particular Gradle version. And if you try to use um, a latest version of Gradle, um, there may be some uh, unexpected behavior. So bear that in mind uh, if you uh, want to upgrade um, uh, you can always check the github issues tracker to see if there is any particular issue with a, a more recent version of gradle um, but that's completely um, possible to upgrade uh, the gradle version uh, of uh, your grace application another file that is here is the gradle wrapper.jar um, so what is the Gradle wrapper.jar? Um, the Gradle wrapper.jar uh, is uh, a jar file uh, which contains codes uh, for which contains the code uh, responsible for downloading the Gradle distribution. So normally uh, it's not recommended, it's not considered a good practice to uh, include um, a jar file in your uh, version control system, but in this case um, you can make a, a, an exception it's completely fine to uh, check out this, to check in this file into the um, continuous integration version. In fact, you should do that. You should uh, check uh, check in uh, all these files into your Git or your um, or any other um, version control system that you are using. Um, a couple of other files related to Gradle are uh, Gradle W. Uh, that's the cell script um, for executing the the. The Gradle wrapper, that's the, the script that you will mostly be using if you are in, in, in Mac or in a Unix-based system. Um, and then you have also the, um, the Gradle WView.bat, which is a Windows bat script um, for executing the build with the wrapper. So this one, build, this one will be the one that you are using um, when you are uh, uh, using Windows. Um, Another file is the gradle.properties and this is a properties file um, where you find the definition of the Grace version, the GORM version and the Gradle wrapper version. Um, we recommend you to keep uh, your build as easy to maintain as possible uh, and we recommend you to define um, versions uh, in, in the Gradle properties of file. I, I find this a really nice pattern uh, which helps to work with Gradle and Grace applications. So for example, here I have um, in the build.gradle file, which is the, um, if you are using the Groovy DSL uh, with Gradle, which is the one that you are using, that's the um, uh, default uh, build script file name. Um, here we have, for example, the uh, asset pipeline Gradle version uh, defined to 2.11.1, uh, 2.15.1, sorry. And here we have the same one. Um, we could, for example, define here in Gradle properties, asset pipeline, version 2.15.1 and now we could here um, use group in a string interpolation so this is a g-string where we can uh, apply a string interpolation the same here and uh, that way we wanted to upgrade the um, um, the version of asset pipeline plugin uh, we will just need to change it in one place in the gradle.properties file. Um, uh, here in the uh, bottom right corner uh, in Gradle, um, IntelliJ idea is telling me that the, because I did a change in the build.gradle file that Gradle press need to be imported. I can import changes or enable it to import. I can always refresh Gradle. There is a, 
a Gradle drawer um, here on the on the right, uh, at least in the macOS IntelliJ IDEA version, um, where you can always click the refresh button, uh, which will basically import the changes, um, or uh, you can also um, click uh, uh, enable auto import. That's completely fine and not a recommended way to do that. Um, so uh, I have covered the, the basic uh, Gradle files as well. If you are using a, a multi-project build, uh, you will have a settings.gradle file as well here. Um, we have a different um, video, a uh, different quick cast covering um, multi-project builds. So I uh, encourage you to uh, to watch that uh, quick casting if you are interested in uh, learning more about uh, multi-project builds. Another option that I would like to discuss with you is the um, uh, integration of Gradle and IntelliJ IDEA. Especially uh, useful for me is if you go to preferences and if you search for Gradle. And if you go, you have a Gradle runner. Um, you have the options to click delegate ID, build uh, run actions to Gradle, which is basically you are telling IntelliJ to use Gradle for any, everything. And then um, here in run test using, uh, you can select always the Gradle uh, test runner. Uh, if you are using, for example, um, the web driver uh, binaries plugin uh, to um, handle the um, uh, Selenium driver um, download and configuration uh, for your JEP test, uh, that's the recommended way to always run the test using the Gradle test runner. Um, if you select these options in the uh, preference menu of uh, IntelliJ, that's normally what I do. Uh, I normally delegate uh, completely to um, all the IDs, uh, build and run actions to Gradle. Here. For the last part of this quick cast, I would like you to show um, how to run uh, a Gradle application development uh, lifecycle uh, through Gradle tasks. Um, I will be running those tasks in the command line, but uh, we could uh, run them using the um, in, in IntelliJ IDEA. For example, you have the Gradle drawer that we um uh, spoke about before uh, where you have uh, the Gradle task and you can execute them um i will be using a, a more complete uh, application than the one we created before um just for uh, having a, um an app with tests which we can run um and and you can see um i have a feeling of a uh, a more real uh, application. This application that I will be using is available in github.com slash grade samples slash uh, JEP uh, example grades. Uh, this is uh, an application um, which uh, uses GSPs uh, to create a view layer. Uh, it uses, uh, it has uh, both unit test and integration test um, and it has also functional test uh, built with uh, JEP. Uh, we will be running those and discussing uh, several options uh, that we have to run the application. I have the application here configured in my IDE. Um, and I have uh, also a, a command line um, here uh, in the same directory. Um, first thing that we can do is we can run the application. Uh, in order to run a Gradle application, you can uh, use uh, the Gradle task boot run. Um, Grace tree is built on top of a uh, Spring Boot. Uh, so in case you were wondering where where is what's the um, the naming um, reason uh, for this Gradle task, that's why. Um, once we create we run a Gradle Boot Run, uh, the Grace application will be started in the, the Grace development environment. As you probably know, Grace applications uh, have the concept of environments. Um, the apps uh, tells me that the application started in localhost 8080. I can uh, actually visit that page and we have the app running here. Um, I can stop the application. I will click uh, Ctrl C uh, to stop the app. The app is no longer running in my computer. I can run the unit test. Uh, unit tests in Agrees 3 applications are located under um, source uh, test. Um, in order to run the unit test with a Gradle task, we can run a Gradle double view for the wrapper a test. This will run all the um, unit tests in my project. As you saw, we are getting some uh, output uh, about the test that uh, has been executed. Um, we are getting uh, that output because um, in this project, I configured here, if you go to build.gradle, um, 
uh, you will see that uh, here I have defined uh, for all the tasks uh, of type test uh, I have um, uh, before test and test login I have uh, I want to log the events such as passed, skipped or failed and I want to have like an exception format full and that's why uh, you are seeing here uh, the events that the test um, passed and uh, you are seeing here this um, uh, line uh, of the test uh, being executed because uh, we introduced here in the before test we introduced the um, this uh, line basically where we are logging uh, the test descriptor um, if uh, I find this particularly uh, really very useful um, especially when you run the test in an integration um, in a continuous integration server um, where you probably you may not have access to the reports uh, so this is an easy way to um, to see uh, which test uh, got run and which tests uh, eventually may fail um, so yeah I recommend you to um, to uh, check uh, Gradle options to have a more verbose uh, output when you run the test. Um, another uh, thing that we can run uh, is we can run the integration test. Uh, integration tests in a Gradle project are located under source integration test. Um, I have um, uh, I have uh, integration test in Grace are annotated with that integration. I have integration test uh, here for um, some GORM uh, data services and I have also some uh, JEP tests um, uh, I have annotated my um, JEP test with add requires which is an XPOC annotation which basically will um, uh, skip this test unless uh, the system uh, property JEP uh, is supplied and that means that when I run here um, to run the integration test uh, you will use integration test task in Gradle and that means that those tests uh, will be um, uh, skipped they will not be not executed um, uh, integration tests uh, start the whole um, Grails uh, application so they are a bit uh, slower um, than, um, than uh, regular um, unit tests uh, if I supply now uh, the uh, JEP environment property, so in order to supply assist the system property, you can use uh, minus D uh, JEP env, and I can say run the test in Chrome, and this will run the test in Chrome, um, and you will see that uh, both uh, uh, integration test uh, and also this uh, all these um, JEP tests that were annotated with the add requires will be executed as you see the tests are running now in my um, Chrome browser um, uh, which is automatically um, run by JEP um, let me wait for the test to finish uh, before I show you another um, nice uh, feature of Gradle um, which is uh, when you have um, uh, a task uh, with a long name such as integration test um, if there is there are no two tasks uh, which have a, a name collision we can um, sometimes uh, run uh, the task with a shortcut uh, so in for integration test it uh, is a nice shortcut that will run the test as well um, the last thing that I wanted to show you is um, uh, you saw that I supplied here um, the JPM environment property uh, in order um, for that value to be passed uh, you will need to basically um, uh, configure in the task with type test you will need to supply the, the system property JPM uh, is actually the system property JPM so you will need to tell uh, Gradle explicitly which um, system properties uh, you want to um, uh, white uh, label um, so that they are uh, passed um, the Grails uh, env environment property that's an exception so if I do here like uh, Grails um, env um, dev uh, that will be automatically supplied even if I didn't um, edit any block such as this one in the um, in the build.gradle file uh, but for other system properties if you are working with system properties and you have the feeling that those system properties are not being um, passed to your test that's probably why 
um, you will need to um, add a block such as this one here. Um, there is also a nice um, Gradle task which is a check. A check basically um, it will in a Grace application it will run both a unit test a, a integration test and if you have for example here in my project I have CodeNark which is a static analyzer and uh, CodeNark will be run as well uh, so that uh, check is kind of um, an aggregator of uh, different um, yeah, verifications of our project um, another uh, quite useful task that I use often is uh, Gradle uh, Compile Ruby um, I uh, often, uh, I, I'm 99% of my Grace code um, is annotated with compile static. Uh, so compile Ruby will uh, catch uh, all these compilation errors. Um, so if I, for example, um, had a typo here where I say find bookings uh, and I will be executing compile Ruby, that will be um, uh, discovered by compile Ruby. Um, yeah, that's pretty useful um, task in your arsenal. Uh, another uh, important task is Gradle Assemble. Um, Gradle Assemble generated a word file for this project. Um, I, if I go now to build, um, that will be under lips. Uh, you have here the module name plus version name. This is the version name which is located in build.gradle. Uh, .war, if you wanted a, a fat jar uh, instead of a, um, a war file, uh, you can comment out the war plugin. Uh, and if you run a Gradle assemble, um, a fat jar will be uh, generated for you. Um, which you can, for example, execute with uh, Java minus jar, a uh, built ellipse, yep. Example grace uh, co1.jar, uh, that will start the application under uh, localhost 8080 as well. And there you go. And uh, since um, both the Gradle assemble is, uh, I believe, the only um, Gradle task that will be by used by default the uh, Grace environment production. Um, the, for example, the test and integration will use uh, by default the Grace environment development, and the boot run will use the Grace environment. Uh, sorry, the test and the integration test will use by default the Grace environment test, and the boot run will use by default the uh, Grails environment development. Um, so yeah, sensible defaults uh, for the environment depending on the Gradle task that you are using. Just to recap what uh, we have learned in this quick cast, um, we learned about the Gradle wrapper, we learned about the uh, different files um, that will be in your uh, Grails application to use the Gradle wrapper. Uh, we used about the most common uh, task um, to um, build and run your uh, Grace applications with Gradle, such as boot run to run the application test, to run the, the unit test, integration test to run the um, integration test check, which will run both a uh, unit and integration test. Uh, compile Ruby, which is uh, a useful task um, to um, check the uh, compilation of your Groovy sources. Um, and also uh, assemble uh, to either um, build a WAR file or a fat jar which you will use um, to deploy um, to production. Um, of course, there is uh, a lot of uh, more options to explore um, when using Gradle. In fact, Gradle is uh, really great because it's a really flexible uh, build tool. Um, we recommend you to visit uh, gradle.org uh, to learn more about Gradle. Um, and as they say uh, in the Gradle website, uh, happy building. Thank you for watching this episode of the OCI Grails QuickCasts. For more information on how OCI can help you with Grails or any of these other practice areas, visit OCIweb.com or contact us at info at OCIweb.com. Follow our Twitter accounts at Object Computing and at Grails Framework. Also, read regular updates on the OCI Grails team blog at grailsblog.ociweb.com.